Hey guys, um, before I start this topic, um, first, yeah, this is not a real video, it's just me talking in a mic again. My computer still doesn't want to cooperate with my camera. This doesn't mean I won't be doing videos, um, like I said in my last one, my wife um, is planning on letting me use her laptop to do videos. I'm just not doing it now because she's using it, so yeah. But I am planning on doing v real videos soon, so you will see my ugly face again. Also, um, I know the video I promised next was going to be my Hall of Shame video because plenty of people have been begging in their own special way to be in this all last year. Um, the reason why I have not, I'm not doing that now is basically I'm not in the right frame of mind to do it at this point. Um, you might have noticed it's been quite a while since I've done a video. It's because we've had a visitor for most of this month, a really good friend of mine and my wife's, really good friend. Um, she stayed with us for some time. Um, we had a lot of fun, hung out, talked, shared things. So it, it's just been a, um, a really nice, pleasant month, and I just haven't been, in, you know, in the dark mood to denounce the idiots. So the Hall of Shame one's gonna have to be put on hold for maybe the next or the video after that. But rest assured, it's coming. So, yeah. All right, enough of that. This topic, as you can tell at the top, is basically it, you can kind of consider it an addendum to my martial arts myth series about Shaolin Temple though it's gonna go a little bit further than that while I am gonna go further into explaining why I said what I said in those videos I'm also gonna talk a little bit about the classification systems that were used with Chinese martial arts because I'm realizing from a lot of the PMs that people have sent me and the comments that have been sent that that seems to be this, what's causing a lot of the confusion as to why many people don't understand why I said what I said about how Shaolin is not its own style and actually most of what you believe about Shaolin is actually overrated. A lot of it is legend. It's not true. Um, again, this is not a knock on Shaolin martial arts and people from the temple. I'm not saying their Kung Fu is bad. I am not saying that the temple did not have real martial arts in it. I'm not saying that there aren't real martial arts there today. What I am saying is that they have not developed their own system. They're not their own style. And most of what people believe about Shaolin either isn't true or their history is just plain old overrated. They actually have very little influence when it comes to the wide history of Chinese martial arts. And why a lot of people believe otherwise is partly due to myth, partly due to martial arts novels that were written. But a lot of it has to do with the really bad classification system with Chinese Kung Fu. Chinese Kung Fu has had a really interesting history with classification. They've always had bad ways of, of classifying their styles. I don't know why this is, but they've always had bad systems. I'm going to go through three common ones, and the third one I'll mention has a lot to do with this topic. First one that I'm sure everybody who's into Chinese martial arts or knows a little bit about it has heard of is the whole internal versus external martial arts classification. This one is flawed. The general thing is that all external arts are supposedly, they rely mostly on muscular strength and fast movements and acrobatic moves and all that. And it rely, you know, it's all physical. And the internal arts are more, you know, internal. You're relying supposedly on the mystical arts of chi and, you know, um, you know, slow flowing moves and developing internal power and bending candle flames back and all this other crap. Bad classification system, people. Um, for one, any real martial, Chinese martial arts will tell you that any Chinese martial arts has mixes of both. There are both elements in there. There is no such thing as a Chinese martial art that is purely muscular. There are some internal things there. And second, internal and external are more ways of describing someone's level of development within a martial art. When a student first practices, forms and all that, yeah, it is all external, you know, it, it, there's certain, there's so many ways of using the term external, you can use it to describe the fact that they're using mostly muscular strength, like muscular strength in terms of their limbs, not necessarily they're using their core muscles or using, you know, how to develop your, your waist power, which would be considered internal power. It could also describe how a student is just starting out in martial arts, he doesn't know the deep internal aspects of it yet, so he's an quote-unquote external student. You know, um, it, yeah, it, it can get crazier than that, but I don't want to go further because this will take several videos to describe. Needless to say, it's flawed. One last thing to let you know about, um, to show you how flawed this is, um, something like Cha Fist, which is a style of long fist in China, has a lot of flowing movements as you get further into the style where it seems all nice and fluid and internal. On the other hand, a style like um, 
Tai Chi, which everyone considers the quintessential internal martial art, is a form of long fist. Yes, you heard me correctly. Tai Chi is a form of long fist. If you don't believe me, go practice your spring leg again. Tom Tway, go practice that. Go through some of the lines in that and then look at Tai Chi and notice, hey, you're doing some of the same motions because it's the same thing. Anyway, I've ha harped too long in that classification system. Quickly to go to the next one is the whole northern and southern classification system. Generally, northern martial arts is supposed to be all long-armed and acrobatic and mostly based on long-range fighting and kicks. Like, they're supposed to be masters of kicks and long-range fighting. While southern styles are more strong stances and masters of hand techniques with not that much kicking development and short-range fighting. Bad. Because if you really research Chinese martial arts, you realize that northern martial arts can have a lot of short-arm techniques there. But anyone remember Xing Yi? So-called internal art? That's a northern style, and it mostly uses hands, and it's rather short-ranged. Or Ba Ji, another long um, northern system with a lot of short-range motion, a lot of powerful punches. Then southern styles, for those who don't believe they have good kicks, um, isn't Hung Gar supposed to be known for the shadowless leg kick technique? And what about Choi Le Foot, which is a rather long-range and mid-range fighting style? It's from southern China. Sorry, this one doesn't work either. Finally, here's one that not too many people probably know about, but it's led to the confusion that leads to my whole Shaolin topic. What many people don't realize is that during the Republican era in China, there was this big push to bring Chinese martial arts to the forefront and teach it to everybody, like so they could develop national pride and all that. And certain institutes were trying to classify systems. And one of the things they decided was that any internal art would be considered a wudan martial art. Don't ask me why. But they considered arts like Tai Chi and Ba Guan, whatever. They said, we'll consider those wudan mountain martial arts. So they classified those as wudan. Anything that was not classified under wudan was classified under Shaolin. Yes, I am not lying about this. Do the research if you don't believe me. I'll state this again. Anything that they did not put under the header wudan they put under Shaolin, whether or not they came from the temple at all. I guess they can, I don't know why. Maybe they consider this just their own code language and they just consider it cool words to use. But yeah, anything that was not considered Wudan was considered Shaolin and vice versa. This has led to the confusion that has gone on to this day because you'll see tons of styles today that don't consider Shaolin. But when you look at the history, it never came from a monk. Um. A good example I can give is Dr. Yang Jung Ming, who's a damn good martial arts master, by the way. But he has a lot of styles that he considers Shaolin. If you look at the history of those forms that he teaches, however, they don't come from Shaolin. They probably come from Man. Like I, I remember his Long Fist system. He's even said in the book, this form comes from Northern Mantis. This form comes from um, Eagle Claw. This particular form is a Cha Fist system, and so on. Those aren't Shaolin styles, people. <laughs> They come from other systems, other long fist systems. But the reason why the term Shaolin is on there is because he's using a classification system which has been used in China for God knows how long, but it's wrong. <laughs> it's just a popular classification system. Doesn't mean it's from there. You find that Taiwan is a good example. If you look at Taiwan and tiny Taiwanese martial arts masters, for some reason they use this classification system a lot. Anything not Wudan, they just call it Shaolin, just because. Because it's been used, other people used it, so we might as well use it too. But it's just not true, it didn't come from there. Cha Fist, I see a lot of people practicing Cha Fist forms. Um, the famous Road 4 from Cha Fist, for example, you find that in so many different Long Fist schools today. That's from a Muslim system, people. Many people don't know this. Cha Fist is actually developed by the Hui people in China, a minority who are Muslim. That's not from Shaolin. <laughs> Why would a bunch of Muslims be practicing uh, uh, in the Shaolin Temple? Does it make sense to you? It's just because of the classification system that today, to this day, people think that the style they're studying came from Shaolin. It didn't. Um, I've just about run out of time, but um, one thing I want to impart real quick is that the only thing in, Chi in Kung Fu history that, Chi uh, that Shaolin can ever lay claim to fame with are their staff techniques. That is the only thing that they can take full credit for. They, ha they were known for their staff techniques for obvious reasons. They weren't allowed to use weapons, which, by the way, 
you guys should need to think about for those of you talking about how Shaolin developed all martial arts if they weren't allowed to use weapons where did all these other weapon forms come from they were known for their staff techniques that was it that was it look in the text descriptions I got some books listed there do the research I've run out of time so later <laughs>